Jack. Hey, hey, Neil. What's the brightest star in the nighttime sky? Um, are we talking my career here, Neil? Okay. <laughs> Uh, just saying, I've, I've been waiting for us to get around to this. <laughs> How bright is your star, Chuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, if, if, if it were me up in the sky, I would just be a dim, a dim uh, spot in the Milky Way. It uh, is funny that a fundamental word in all of Hollywood is derived from my profession. It astrophysics. is. It is the most fundamental word. It is. Are you a Hollywood. star? Meaning, are you, are you burning thermonuclear fuel in your core? Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the Walk of Fame. It's a star. It's a, it's a star. Yeah. That's all astro. It's... Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's said that the from everything I've ever heard, that's the North Star. That's what people say. Well, that's the North Star. It's the you can always find your way home because it's mm -hmm. the brightest star in the sky. Just follow the North Star. Yeah. So in my experience, nine out of ten people will say that. Right. Yeah. Okay. They'll see the they'll see the first bright star after sunset, and then assert that it's the North Star. So when I, in one hundred percent of those cases, they're looking at a planet. Well, that makes sense because a planet is right there. Yeah, well, well <laughs> planets right in front of our noses. Planets, planets are right here, man. <laughs> but for me, the funny part is they'll they'll make a wish on the you know star bright, star bright, first star, first I, star I see tonight, tonight. right. And then they make a wish, and of course the wishes don't come true because they're wishing on planets. Uh -huh. Just, I'm, that's why. You never knew that. that right. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> I want to explain then, that to any kid now. Just like, <laughs> how do, how and then if you're, not, if you're not wishing on the, on the star, uh, and because you know that they're planets, it means you know enough science not to be wishing on stars. That's <laughs> so pretty cool. It all balances out. And it's so funny that you say that. It just popped into my head. What a uh, culturally entrenched uh, sentiment that is, wishing on a star. I mean, there's songs about it. It, it, it transcends, um, you know, geography and culture. You know, you have it in pretty much in all kinds of writings, wishing on a star. That's pretty wild. Yeah, and, that's, and, I, and I'm honored that my field supplies this level of cultural referencing. Mm -hmm. to do all that we do so so yeah so the north star is not the brightest star in the night sky okay i, I just want to make that clear okay now so now here's the thing I'm, yeah because what what is the north star then? <laughs> 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 what, like what is the north star and why is it well, so so, why so, so let's get any, let's, why is it of any significance yeah, if it's so, not the I, brightest star there you go so we'll get to the brightest star in a minute so the north star is the star in the sky that's closest to where Earth's axis points on the sky. Uh -huh. So you have a rotating Earth, and it's just right. sort of rotating. Right. And the axis is just sort of sitting there as right. Earth spins around it. That axis is pointing to a spot in space, okay, cool. in the sky. Gotcha. So we say, is there a star near to that spot? Because then we'd always be pointing in that direction. Right. So the star closest to that spot is the North Star. And the North Star has a name. Did you know this? Um, I want to guess because the only star that I hear, hear the name of all the time is the Dog Star. Yeah, no, that's not correct. <laughs> okay, well, that there you go. I said it was a guess. <laughs> It's not serious. It's not serious. The dog star. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dog star is serious. Serious is the dog star, not the North Star. So the name of this star is sensibly Polaris. Oh, for the pole or the axis, Polaris. Polaris, and in fact, that was the name I think of America's first nuclear submarine, Polaris, that could launch intercontinental ballistic missiles. Um, We're so about to drop a star on you. <laughs> <laughs> so American. I that know. is so American. Okay, <laughs> we're about to drop a star on you. <laughs> <laughs> With that, that produces energy to, to vaporize you just the way the centers of stars do. Yep. All right, right. It's right. the same thermonuclear mechanisms going on. So anyhow, so it's got a name, Polaris. Now, the Big Dipper. Okay, the lip of the Big Dipper. This part right here. Okay, the lip. 
So there's a handle, and then there's the cup, and the lip is the front edge of that cup. Right. That points to the North Star. Okay. Okay? That's how you can always find the North Star. Because gotcha. the Big Dipper is very obvious in the Northern Hemisphere. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you and then it points, and you go like four segments up, and then boom, there it is. Okay. So there are a couple of issues with this. First, the North Star is not exactly above the pole. Okay. You can fit two full moon widths between it and the exact spot over the North Pole. Gotcha. All right, which means if you took a camera and a long exposure photo centered on the North Star, the North Star will not be pegged in the middle. You'll see it make a circle. Interesting. So it is not exactly above the North Star. And the reason why you're seeing it make a circle is because you have the long exposure and the Earth is rotating where your camera is? Yes, exactly. Okay. And so, otherwise, if you just take snapshots, you just get the stars where they are. Right. But if you take a long exposure, you get the stars blurring, basically, but they blur with the rotation of the Earth. Gotcha. gotcha. And so you'll see that it actually would trace a circle around the actual North Pole. Because pe the people are saying, isn't it amazing that we have a star exactly over the North Pole? What, well, what are the odds? Well, it's well, not the exactly. Would, the odds would be zero. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> That's a bad bet. Yeah, Don't it's take not exactly odds. over the North Pole. Not only that, the lip of the Big Dipper uh -huh. kind of misses the North Star. If you did an exact line, it, it's off. So there's a lot of fakery going on. Not bad fakery, but just right. people want the sky to have more meaning than it actually does. Wow. And, and so they, so you say things that are sort of partly true just because you feel better about what it is you're talking about. Okay, so the North Star is kind of like, directionally, it's kind of like getting directions in the hood. <laughs> it's kind of over there. Yeah, yeah, man, so what you want to do? <laughs> Are you going to keep on down there? You going to keep going and going, right? Right? And you going to come to, uh, so it's a car, right? But one of the wheels is up on a crate. Yeah, All right. make it right there. Like, that's, make it right there. Fine. All right? You're going to keep going, right? Just keep going and going, right? That's right. Directions on the sky from the stars are exactly <laughs> like that. So now let me tell you how bright the North Star is. It's, right. it's not the brightest, but let me tell you. Take a guess. Um... I'm going to say it's a B student bright. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it's not First in the top. First of all, how do you measure brightness in the, in the night sky? I really don't even know that. But we have meters that do, do this. This is science. That you oh. don't have to worry about that. We got, okay. we got this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and even if you didn't have meters, you could say, yeah, that's brighter than that. And that's dimmer than that. Yeah, we got this. Okay. We've had this even since before there were telescopes. Okay, so it is not in the top 10. Oh, no. It is not in the top 20. Oh, goodness. It is not in the top 30. Dad, North Star, what are you it doing? It is not even in the top 40. Oh, my God. The North Star is like the United States with respect to math and science. <laughs> We say we're number one, but we're 47. <laughs> the North Star is the 49th brightest star in the night sky. Oh, my gosh. It is completely uninteresting. It is easily missable. Right. It is does not call attention to itself. That's why you need the lip of the Big Dipper to find to it. To find it. Because you actually need a pointer because it really isn't remarkable at all. It is all. not remarkable. Not wow. remarkable. Wow. It kind of reminds me of somebody I know. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> you sound like you should have your own TV show, reminiscences of everyone you grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> stories. So, yeah, so the North Star is just lame. I mean, it's just embarrassing. And meanwhile, people think it's the brightest star in the night sky. And that's what's weird about it to me. I, I just, because they've never checked. And so this is the lore overriding people's curiosity. 
I wonder how Venus feels about that. <laughs> you know, Venus is the most mistaken object for the North Star because it's the brightest in the n- night that's sky, what I'm the morning saying. sky. Venus yeah. is sitting around like, ah, uh, just like a man, <laughs> just like a man. Here I am, just as bright as I can be. Every single night I come out. Is that what look, Venus sounds uh, like? <laughs> look at me, and you know what they say? Oh my God, look at the North Star. Once again, a man just taking. My credit for the hard work that I do. Okay. And no, there doesn't happen to be a star in the South Pole. It's just a big empty spot. There is a star closer to the South Pole than the North Star is to the North Pole, but it's even And we don't dimmer. call that the South Star? You can, but it's, it's, it, it has a name. It's called Sigma Octans, and it's very unassuming, and nobody cares. I don't, so. you know why nobody cares? Because its name is Sigma Octans. Like, <laughs> don't nobody want to talk about Sigma Octans? Because <laughs> Sigma Octans. There, there's a constellation called Octans, which is an octant, which is an early version of a sextant. Uh-huh. And uh, there's a lot of um, navigational instruments among the constellations of the Southern Hemisphere. You know why? Ah, because when Europeans uh, got to the Southern Hemisphere and decided to map the stars, we had already begun the Industrial Revolution. And so they weren't thinking centaurs and Greek mythology. They were thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to put some badass equipment here. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an architect's table. There's a, a, a telescope, a microscope, a, a sextant, and an octant. Wow. It's all there. These are all constellations of the 88 in the night sky. Wow. So one last thing about the North Star. So you can picture this. If you are Santa Claus looking straight up, what star do you see? Looking straight up, you see a dead spot. Well, no, yes, because we just learned that. But, right. <laughs> but oh, I thought it was a trick question. <laughs> no, that's not true. No, you look up. Santa Claus will look up and see the see North Star. The North Star, right? Okay. So how many degrees up is that from For the him. horizon? Yeah. From the horizon. Well, that no, that should be nothing. He's he's already there. No, no. Degrees from the horizon to straight overhead. Oh, for Santa Claus. Um, let me see, because he's at the top of the world, so the degrees on the horizon. No, forget the, it doesn't matter. Just, he, yeah, Santa Claus is on the, quote, top of the world, sure. But now he wants to know how high up is the North Star for him, above the horizon. So how many degrees is that? Oh, that's um, uh, straight up. That's 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 90 what degrees. is the latitude of the North Pole? Um, 360 degrees. What is the latitude of the North Pole? It's 90 degrees. <laughs> 90 degrees. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I just love, no, I said that because I wanted to see. This is what I love. This is what I love you being the educator that you are. Because I'll do that and I'm just waiting for the reaction. Because if it were me, I'd be like, man, what the hell is wrong with you? You dumb. <laughs> what you do? Hey, you do this. this I gave you, you a do. second chance. I right, gave you a second chance. You always do this. You're like, I said, my boy knows better than this. I'm going to give him a second chance. I'm not going to say a damn thing. He's going to fix his own damn mistake. Exactly. Right. But I love it. I love it. Go ahead. The North Star is 90 degrees up when you're at the North Pole, which is at a latitude of 90 degrees. That is not a coincidence. Okay? If Santa Claus marches south, the North Star will get lower and lower and lower in the sky. Santa Claus gets to the equator. Mm -hmm. The North Star is on the horizon. The latitude of the equator is zero. zero. The elevation of something on the horizon is zero. So the elevation in degrees of the North Star above your horizon is your latitude on Earth. Oh, because it follows all the way down. It that's, follows all the way it down. It follows all the way down. That, well, that's Correct. pretty interesting. Yes, very interesting. And that's so interesting. this was an important navigational tool. That makes sense. For everybody, right. Right. And of course, the Underground Railroad followed the North Star because if you just walk towards the North Star, you'll eventually reach Santa Claus. But Ohio is good enough. Yeah, you might you might want to keep going until you get to Canada. I was <laughs> just, just in case. Just in case. You never know. You never know. You never know. All right. That's all we got time for. Chuck, that's North Star in a nutshell. All right. All right. We'll catch you on the next one.